welcome to Jim Kim. Now today's video is in covalent bonding part 2 video and here we are going to deal with determination of structure and stereochemistry of some simple inorganic molecules based on VSEPR theory and we will deal with what is known as stereochemically active and inactive clone pairs. Now before starting already one video is being uploaded in the channel you can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. Now let us start. So further in O 3 minus. Here our central atom is nitrogen. So it has 5 electrons plus 3 electrons from oxygen 1 minus 1 for sigma and pi to give this one and for minus charge there is plus 1. So here we will get 6 and 6 means planar trigonal right and it will look like this. That is this nitrogen O minus O minus and double bond oxygen. Now this is a more correct form of structure. Now this is a kind of important canonical form. Okay, there are more canonical forms but this is the most stable one. And brief discussion about this is being done in the PDF file which I have given in the description box of the previous video so you can see that. Okay, now the next moiety is also having nitrogen in it. So we will see for NO2 minus NO2 and NO2 plus. Okay, now here we calculate the valential electron. 5 plus 2, 1 minus 1 plus 1 equal to 6. So it is planar trigonal. Right. Next is our NO2. So in NO2 there is 5 plus 2, 1 minus 1 gives us 5. So this is odd electron molecule. Okay, odd electron molecule. And in the chart, we have not seen any of them having 5 electrons. In this case, it has 5 plus 2 into 1 minus 1 minus of 1 because of positive charge. So here are 4 electrons. So it is linear. Right. Now if we try to draw the diagram, it is like this for this one. And for the other one, it is like this. Right. And the angles are here corresponding to 118 degree near about and here it is 180 degree. But what about NO2? It must be having bond angle somewhere between 180 degree and 118 degree. So it is near about 140 degree. Okay. And it can be written as like this. That is in having an odd electron here, double bond oxygen O minus or it can be written as in with one odd electron in the nitrogen two electrons are being donated to oxygen and here is the double bond. So anyways you can represent. So since electron count is between these two that is NO2 minus and NO2 plus so here the bond angle is between 120 degree and 180 degree as we can see here and in liquid state this NO2 molecule comes close to each other and there occurs pairing of odd electrons over nitrogen and thereby leads to dimerization. Okay. And the dimerization structure looks like this. If you see, then it will be like this. Nitrogen, nitrogen bond. Here is one oxygen. Here is another oxygen bonded by coordinate covalent bond. Here is double bond and here is another double bond. And this occurs in liquid state. Okay. Now, the next moiety which we are going to deal with is our H3PO3. Okay. And here... This is a dibasic acid. Remember this. This is an extra fact. Dibasic acid. Now here, if we take one of the phosphoruses as a central atom, so 5 plus 3 for hydrogen plus 3, 1 minus 1 for 3 oxygen to give 8. That is tetrahedral. So it will look like this. That is P with 3 positions occupied by OH. Right. Here OH and here is also OH. And the other position of the tetrahedral will be occupied by a lone pair. Now, this particular has a repulsion. That is, here is a repulsion occurring. Okay. So, another structure can be drawn equivalent to this. This can be like this. That is, a pH bond with a double bond oxygen and OH and OH. So, here this is more stable as there is a stable P pi D pi bond. P pi is from oxygen and D pi is from phosphorus. Oxygen phosphorus bond formation which is stable 
and so we support this structure to be our required one okay now we go for the next one the next structure is h3po2 our next structure is h3po2 and this is a monobasic acid okay and you should try it for your own so this is your homework now next moiety is hno3 here the central atom is nitrogen right and it has five electrons plus one electron from hydrogen and three one minus one for oxygen which is equals to six this is planar trigonal as we have known it and it looks like this that is nitrogen with two double bonds one oxygen having a double bond another oxygen can be written like this and here oh and here is a plus to just neutralize this plus with this minus okay now we will see for another moiety that is npcl2 npcl2 now which one will be our central atom the phosphorus will be taken as central atom so here 5 plus 1 for the sigma bond of nitrogen and then minus 2 plus 2 so this is for the sigma bond of nitrogen this is for the pi bond of nitrogen because it forms two pi bonds right and these are for the two chlorine atoms so here we get planar trigonal planar trigonal right so this is a planar trigonal one and here our structure looks like this p triple bond nitrogen chlorine and chlorine okay now next few will be your homework as a checkpoint so you can try it out if you can't solve it let me know in the comment box i will solve it in the next video so these are the molecules so one is SnCl2 minus number two is N2H2 which is diimide number three is N2H4 number four is H2O2 number five is N3 minus that is azidiane and number six is N2O and previously I have also given another one which is H3PO2 so you have to find the geometry and draw the structure okay so these are the works for checkpoint next we will come across with stereochemically active and inactive lone pairs so let us start with it now what is lone pair we know that right but what we do not know is stereochemically active what is it mean stereochemically active lone pair now this is being present in x e f6 now if we start calculating so this has eight electrons plus six electrons from fluorine so it has 14 so it is pentagonal bipyramidal right pentagonal bipyramidal so here there is seven electron pairs we can see from here there is seven electron pairs experimentally what is being found is that its structure experimentally is found to be as distorted octahedral why this is so we will learn first we are going to draw the structure now in xcf6 vscpr theory cannot explain the actual structure which is distorted octahedron okay now this xef six bonds of the octahedron accounts for 12 electrons and hence there has to be a lone pair right as we have seen that there is seven electron pairs so six electron pairs are for six x e f bond so we are left with one lone pair right now this lone pair should either extend through the face of octahedron or through the edge okay so we will see how it should extend right so let us draw the structure so this is our central atom x okay and we have four atoms in the same plane this four atoms these are the fluorine atoms so let us draw here is our fluorine here is our fluorine here is fluorine and here is fluorine these are in plane with this xc atom now another fluorine is present above the plane and another fluorine is present below the plane and if we join the structure then it will be looking like this that is a octahedral right so these are our greens are our fluorine and the red one is our xc and this so there can be two conditions of placing the lone pair okay first lone pair can be placed from the triangular faces 
so here it can emerge from the triangular faces this is first one and the next case is that here is our fluorines right with one top one bottom and here is our xe so if we continue drawing the same octahedron like this this will be above and this will be below so here this gets joined here another gets joined here comes this one here comes another one so here we have another lone pair coming out from H so it can be like this that is it is in the edge of this one this edge okay so there are two ways so how it will be looking like it will be like this for here there will be three fluorine here and it will be coming out like this here is a lone pair for this one right from the edge and for this one that is when it is coming out from the face then it will be looking like this that is fluorines are here in this face and here is our lone pair so which one will be stable from here we can understand that here there will be more repulsion right because they are more near but here there will be equal repulsions in all sides so this one is particularly favorable so the lone pair should either be extending through a face of the octahedron or through an edge the former will have greater thermodynamic stability okay that is through the face this will have more thermodynamic stability since the lone pair is involved in changing the stereochemistry of the molecule from perfect octahedron to distorted one this lone pair is referred to as stereochemically active lone pair remember when a lone pair forces to change the actual geometry then that lone pair is known as stereochemically active lone pair other examples of stereochemically active lone pairs are for ammonia in h3 the lone pair present for water the lone pair present is active similarly for SnCl2 there is one lone pair present these are all stereochemically active lone pair now from here you can understand that stereochemically inactive lone pairs will be such that they will not cause any change in the structure right so let us see a few examples and understand what is it so first we are going to deal with next stereochemically inactive lone pairs okay now example of it is more often cl f6 minus now let us count the number of electrons here is 7 plus 6 fluorine plus 1 so we get 14 so it is perfectly octahedral whether it is experimental or normal it is perfectly octahedral okay so now we will see the structure now in cl f6 minus the electron count corresponds to 14 and the structure has been found to be perfectly octahedral in spite of the fact that six bond pairs forming chlorine fluorine bonds and there has to be a lone pair okay the lone pair develops something which is important when we will see the diagram okay now see here is our chlorine and fluorine atoms are present here 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 so these are in plane and this is above the plane and this is below the plane and if we try to draw in it it will be looking like this right now this portion is having 100 percent s character okay so this is the main reason for having stereochemically inactive lone pair this particular lone pair present in chlorine has developed a very high s character and hence it comes closer to the nucleus the previous one was extending from the nucleus but here the lone pair is coming closer to the nucleus due to development of high s character okay now thus it will practically not interact with the bonded electrons present here that is which we can see here is a bonded electrons here is the bonded electrons and also here two bonded electrons all these present in the plane and the faces will not get interacted with that lone pair it is for this reason that there will be practically no lone pair bond pair repulsion as we have seen in the previous cases and the nine is perfectly octahedral since this lone pair is not involved in changing the stereochemistry of the molecule they are often referred to as stereochemically inactive lone pair okay now in xcf6 it is due to the larger size of xenon and smaller size of fluorine there is enough space for lone pair to extend through the faces as we have seen here that is lone pair can extend through the space because xenon has large area this is unlike the case where there is clf6 minus now here 
it is due to the relatively smaller size of chlorine as compared to xenon that there will be practically no room for lone pair to extend through the phase and hence they are closer to chlorine nucleus and developing very high S character behaving as stereochemically inactive okay now we can see another thing one thing important just for the facts just like XCF6 okay we can have T E S 6 another is I F 6 minus S B F 6 3 minus so here 6 plus 6 plus 2 here it is 7 plus 6 plus 1 here it is 5 plus 6 plus 3 same electron count so this should have distorted octahedral right according to the trend but remember there when it is given te cl6 2 minus it will have perfectly octahedral structure so these are the differences okay so this video stops here now in the next video we are going to deal with hybridization and equivalent hybridizing this much for today thank you for watching do not forget to like share subscribe and comment